At the turn of the century, St. John the Baptist was built to serve the Diocese of Pittsburgh until 90 years later. The region well in decline, the church was put under an act of suppression by the Bishop of Pittsburgh, out of business. Sitting dormant until 1996, the church brew works reopened the doors of St. John once again, providing warmth and comfort to the community. This time in the form of great, creative, plentiful, and true to its region offerings of delicious food, quenching thirsty souls with a long list of award-winning beers, stout, ale, Maybach, IPA, all serving the finest and loftiest of callings to wash it down. There's nothing like a dog and a beer at the ballpark. Why? Well, there's lots of reasons. But at its core, beer and food are linked at the hip. Always have been, always will be. And the two key components for today's huge growth of interest in the art of craft beers are what I like to call the culinary gunslingers. The brewmasters who are totally dialed into the food and the chefs who see these beers as a vivid living component of the meal. And together, they create mouth-watering dishes and the perfect beers to wash them down. So what we're doing is, we're finding me some brewmasters with whom I am going to do some extreme eating and drinking. And so today, I'm looking to Brant Dubovic, multiple award-winning brewmaster, and super chef Jason Maron. What's up? We're here at the Church Brew Works in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and guys, I gotta tell you, this is an amazing place you've got here. But first, we're here to do important work. So the question that I wanna ask you is, what do you wanna eat? Because I'm there. Well, Scott, tonight we're gonna be uh, serving a barley-crusted rack of lamb with herb mashed potatoes and beer braised red cabbage. But I'll let Jason uh, tell you a little more about the food since it's his expertise. Yeah, please do. We're taking a domestic rack of lamb and we're crusting with some barley that we use in the brewing process. Oh, okay, we've I taken see. the barley, we've toasted it, we've added some seasoning to it and processed it down so it's real fine. Crusting the, the lamb, searing it, and finishing it up in the oven. We're gonna serve it with braised red cabbage, which has some of our dunkel infused Granny Smith apples, some sugar, some vinegar. We're gonna serve it with some herb mashed potatoes and an onion jus to finish it all up. That sounds great. Top of the food chain, bring it on. Yeah, all right, are, are you gonna join us? I'm not gonna join you. I have to go in the back and whip up a dessert for you. Dessert? Dessert. Dessert? You heard it. What are we having? Can't tell you that. Well, I guess that would be a surprise then. Scott's gonna be sure he knows what this is. But he'll be wrong. Wow, this is really, really good. What is this we're drinking here? This is our Pious Monk Dunkel. It's a Munich style dark lager and it's our flagship beer. I chose this beer because it pairs really well with the gaminess of the lamb. The malt balances the uh, meatiness really well right. and uh, rounds it out in a nice full way. You know, you've got the mutton, you've got the, 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 the German beer, you've got the kraut. It's like a big European hood here. It is, it's a little bit of a melting pot in Pittsburgh. Uh, we have a strong Euro Eastern European tradition here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Czechs, a lot of Poles, okay. a lot of Russians right. uh, that worked in the steel industry for years. And they settled in the Lawrenceville neighborhood and made it their home. A lot of the uh, eclectic uh, Eastern European foods translate well to the uh, restaurants in, in the Pittsburgh region. And uh, we have a lot of stuff that we play off of, like a pierogi pizza. Uh, some other European traditions like this, the red cabbage braised in the beer. 
and uh, everything else that we have on the menu plays into the uh, ethnicity of Pittsburgh. <laughs> wow, that, that was delicious. But dude, I've got to get up and walk around a little bit, so you want to show me around the place? Let's go. All right, let's do it. Okay, Brent, my executive producer tells me that it would take you about 15 minutes to give me a detailed explanation of the brewing process going on back there. But this is television. You've got 30 seconds. Go. First of all, we start with the mill in the other room. We come into this guy up here, which is our grist case. Grist is a fancy word for cracked barley. Okay. Barley drops into this guy right over here, okay. which is our uh, mash tun. Okay. Mash tun water mixes with the barley, converts the starches to sugars. Once that's done, we pump all that barley and all that water over into this guy over here. That's called our louder tun. Louder tun has a false bottom, which allows the grain bed to sit on top and allows us to extract the wort, which is the sweet barley tea. Okay. Then pump back into this guy, which is now gonna be called the brew kettle, okay. slowly bringing it to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, we add our first addition of hops, which is for bittering, boil for 90 minutes, add our second hop addition, which is for flavor and aroma, then we pump through a heat exchanger, which cools the wort down to 54 degrees, into one of these guys over here, which is our fermenter, Add our yeast, which is a living organism, which feeds on the sugars, and then that beer is ready to be transferred down to the bar. Well, that was a minute 25, but valiant effort, my friend. Mm, dude, this is awesome. And you know, clearly, being Italian, I know a tiramisu when I see one. Am I right? Brew masu. Brew masu. Brew masu. I get it. I like that. Well, you know what? Whatever it is, it is delicious tasting my own. I like this a lot. Now, I'm assuming that what we have here is the dessert stout. This is our blast furnace stout. It's a uh, breakfast style stout that I brewed with lactose, which is a uh, milk sugar, okay. uh, coffee, mm -hmm. and uh, also some uh, oatmeal. Well, you know what I like? That it's a good contrast. It's like, you know, the sweet and the dry. Kind of like having an espresso with your dessert. Well, there's actually coffee. I then thank Brant Dubovic and Jason Marone for a great experience here in Pittsburgh at Church Brew Works. Disguised as really good guys, both brewmaster Brant and chef Jason turned out to be, as I knew they would, the gunslingers I was expecting. They served up great food, great drink, platefuls of spiritual enlightenment, and the heavenly means to wash it down.